Now, personally, I thought it started well but fell apart. All the stuff with the ducks all getting into trouble, that was great. Then it all went black and white and I fell asleep. But, sir, that was the cartoon before the main program. <laughs> yeah? You thought it was all one film? Sure. I thought it was a chilling morality tale about how some naughty ducks got turned into a couple of wailing human beings. <laughs> Floor 3124, Maintenance Department. But what's your mission? Exploration. We trawl deep space in search of new life forms and unique physical phenomena. Hmm, fascinating. How big's the crew? Just under 2,000. All top flight personnel. Hmm, what a ship. What a magnificent vessel. Floor 3125, Sports and Sexual Recreation. Sports and what? Sex. Don't you have a sex deck on your ship? No. Well, what do you do when you want to have sex? Well, we go for runs. <laughs> and watch gardening programmes on the ship's vid. Play blow football. All sorts of things. That's very bad for you. Don't you ever feel tense or frustrated? That is why in our society we only believe in sex. Constant, guilt-free. Six. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Nirvana. I always say, when in Rome, wear a toga. Deck 4177, senior officer's quarters. <clears throat> Our floor. Come and meet the captain. Then at this time, we'll grab some supper and have sex. <laughs> that would be lovely. <laughs> yes, lovely. So, what you seem to be implying, Mr. Navarro, is that the wormhole may very well be compacted. It's a remote possibility, sir. But one that we should consider, hmm? Ah, Commander, any news? Yes, Captain. We are just getting the first stage projections on the dimension probabilities of the Stargate. Interesting. Get them to stochastic diagnostics. Mr. Navarro, I would like the star charts of anything with a probability over 0.5. Aye, aye, sir. Captain, Mr. Rimmer from the mining ship Red Dwarf. Captain, I've been an effective command of Red Dwarf now for nearly four years. I've guided that ragamuffin, ragtail crew of whacked out crazies and hippie peaceniks through hell and back. The respect they feel for me doesn't come from badges on my chest or stripes on my sleeves. It was forged in the blue fire of combat. If I gave the order, those guys would crawl on their bellies across broken glass with their flies unzipped. <laughs> They would be dead? Mr. Rimmer, we are Ubermensch. There is not a man, woman, or vegetable aboard this ship that would fear a challenge from you. Then, Captain Platino, I issue that challenge. Who will be my opponent? Well, I'm sure our computer will come up with the most stimulating matchup. It has stochastic capabilities. Stochastic, eh? No kidding? Mr. Navarro, inform 4172 of the challenge. Mr. Rimmer, you have 24 hours to prepare. Well, thank you, Commander, for a most fascinating afternoon. It's been most fascinating. Perhaps, if you're not in any great rush, Mr. Rimmer, we could retire to my quarters and have sex for a few hours. Well, I... <laughs> Good God, is that the time? Perhaps you find me unattractive? No, 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 not at all. It's just that I should be getting back to Thingy for... A... It's half past already. Perhaps some other time. Come. You need the exercise. Oh, well, I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Look, there's a table tennis table there. I haven't played that for so long. Ping pong. It was different. Different? It had such gusto. 
It's probably coming from a large family. At mealtimes, we had to eat as fast as possible so we could get back for seconds. You make love like a Japanese meal. Small portions, but so many courses. Look, Nirvana, I'm not very good at this, but I just want to say, I think you are the most beautiful woman I've ever seen who didn't have staples through her stomach. <laughs> really, you're gorgeous. I'm constantly fighting back the urge to fold you in thirds. <laughs> oh, God, what am I saying? Someone stop me, please. I'm trying to say you are incredibly incredible. That is not our way. We don't pay compliments. This is just exercise, nothing more. That's all it is to me, too, just exercise. It's just I've never worked out with such fantastic gym equipment. <laughs> Emotion distracts the mind from the pursuit of intellectual excellence. We must dress and go now. I'm sorry, I must have seemed very ignorant. I hardly said anything apart from... Geronimo. <laughs> Thank you for the workout. And thank you for what must rate as the weirdest afternoon of my life. Good luck with the challenge. Dress. Transmit. Privacy off. Commander, some amusing news. Stochy has chosen you to meet our guest's challenge. Me? Obviously, it's ludicrous, but I do have to warn you officially that should you lose this challenge, you will relinquish your hologrammatic status and be terminated. You have 24 hours to prepare. Well, this is wonderful news, sir, but if I might interject a note of caution. Perhaps it's a little premature to get too excited. After all, your challenger will be a mental giant, a classifiable genius, and therefore it is just possible that you may lose. May lose? You know, I can get real, man. You've got about as much chance as, as a Lilith and an elephant. <laughs> I'm going to cheat. You, you can't, sir. It's a battle of wits, your mind against his. I'm not going to use my mind, I'm going to use someone else's. Crichton, you're always saying how human beings only use 5% of their brain's capacity. Well, sometimes a good deal less, sir. Well, that leaves 95% left doing nothing. Now, look, most of the ship's crew are stored in the hologram library. What you're suggesting is immoral and illegal. Mind patching is outlawed. It's just a job. Have you ever seen a movie about a guy on a job like that? Have you ever seen an adventure film about a guy who unclogs vending machines? <laughs> Did they ever make the film... A chicken soup machine operative and a gentleman? <laughs> no, they didn't. And do you know why? Because chicken soup machine operatives are losers. And that is what I am. It's just your job. You are your job. Come on, Crichton, get on with it. Commencing download. In many ways, this is goodbye to Arnold Rimmer. Once the mines are enmeshed, there's no known way of extricating them. Effectively, this is your funeral. The personality we know as Arnold J. Rimmer will cease to be. And you know what I say, Crichton? Good riddance to the useless bastard. <laughs> Commencing integration. Glory or insanity awaits. Really? Yes, indeed it is I, or since you colloquially prefer the accusative the nominative, it is indeed me. <laughs> Sir, we really should be. We, we don't want to miss the, uh, the connection. <laughs> Nonsense. Even by the most circuitous route, brisk perambulation should achieve our objective in 5.37 seconds. Vocal exercise prepares the mind. <laughs> Right, 
Martin, where is he? Hello, Holly. How are you? Fine, thanks, Arnold. <laughs> you haven't seen Crichton, have you? Yes, I have, actually. He's in the sleeping quarters. Thanks a lot, Hull. Not at all, Arn. See you. Bye. What a charming man. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Harrison. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next. Uploading the next candidate. <sighs> so is any kind of favourite emerging? Oh, there's a certain pattern emerging which is hard to ignore. He's right, sir. All the candidates who could loosely be described as desirable either make weak excuses or say no. In fact, so far we've only had one acceptance, and that was from your hologram, sir. <laughs> yeah, well, two of me maybe wouldn't be so terrible. I think we can do better. What's wrong with having two of me? Well, first, let's address the problem of what's wrong with having one of you. <laughs> Next candidate, Deck Sergeant Sam Murray. I was using a mind patch. A mind patch? Are you insane? I would have done anything to get on this ship. To get a post on this vessel, I would have happily tap-danced the title song to 42nd Street, barefoot on a bed of molten lava, while simultaneously giving oral sex to a male orangutan with dubious personal hygiene. Why do you want it so badly? Every time I look in the mirror, I see this. Don't discourage him, Crichton. It's the first thing he's ever read that doesn't have lift-up flaps. <laughs> No, though. This, this wooden horse of Troy Malarkey. I'm not buying that. You're not buying it? It's one of the most famous military manoeuvres in history. It doesn't make sense. It's totally pony. I mean, the Greeks have been camped outside Troy, kapow and zap and kasplat and the Trojans for the best part of a decade, yeah. So? People that stupid deserve to be kapow, zapped and kasplatted in their beds. They deserve to have their throats cut and their guts splined across four panels. You know what the big joke is? From this particular phase in history, we derive the phrase, beware of Greeks bearing gifts. Well, it'd be much more logical to derive the phrase, beware of Trojans, the complete smagheads. <laughs> well, thank you, AJP Taylor. And next week, the learned historian takes as his theme, Hannibal's European campaign and the invention of the elephant poop scoop. <laughs> Actually, sir, I find the Trojan example apposite. Uh, humans accept as truth all kinds of so-called facts which are blatantly preposterous. Like what? Well, the list is endless. It ranges from the notion that it can be too cold to snow, or that bald men are more virile, or that touching wood can ward off bad luck, right through to the absurd notion that there is an afterlife for human beings. I mean, let's face it, you humans believe any old crud. <laughs> Whereas there is, of course, silicon heaven where all dead androids go. I know it's hard for you to accept, sir, that while humans have all the advantages in this life, mechanoids have them in the next, but that's just the way it is. But I can show you the page in your manual that explains you're fitted with a silicon heaven belief chip to give you sucker in adversity. <laughs> a page planted by non-believers to give us faith. What was that? We're locked out. This is not a malfunction. There's something controlling the craft. Holly, any traffic around? Nothing on the local scan. Widening sweep. Nope. <laughs> Getting zippity. This isn't possible. There must be. That's enough, the human known as Lester. Do not attempt to resist me. What happened to him? His voice finally break? <laughs> A word to the wise. If we were somehow able to render Lister unconscious while he's possessed by the Inquisitor, we might be able to get out of this mess. You're broadcasting on my music channel, buddy. <laughs> okay, but damn, what now? Follow the one called Lister and I will reveal myself. I wish he'd stop doing that. <laughs> Realize what's going to happen if he finds us guilty. He's going to completely erase us from history. Every trace of us will completely vanish. 
But won't the erasure of one of us from the space-time continuum play havoc with causality? Surely that's one for the Inquisitor. It is quite simple. By inserting time clamps around your destiny lines, I can erase you without damage. Ow! This time continuum. Ah! Oh, sir! Sir, what are you doing? It's the only way, bud. No, I cannot allow it. Ow! Oh! Do you take me for a fool? Have you no conception of my power? See me now and tremble. The Inquisition begins. Prove to me you are worthy of the honor of life, or drink deeply from the well of nothingness for all eternity. I hate these either-or questions. Who is to be first? Lister. Well, I, I'm afraid it's goodbye, sir. And seeing as we are to be totally erased from history, it's not even au revoir. It's more like jamais au revoir. <laughs> Perfect. Ah, now, what did I do next? I'm terribly sorry. Now, hurry! Take the gauntlet and go, hurry! What the smack is going on? I don't have time to explain. I've come from the future to rescue you. Now you must go, hurry! What about me? I mean, you, I mean us. I'm afraid we get killed. Uh, killed? How? Well, uh, while I'm standing here explaining this to you, the Inquisitor jumps behind like this and attempts to turn my head into an origami boat. You can't save me. I will expire in a little under 20 seconds, after which time he will retrieve the gauntlet, dismantle this time trap, and pursue you. Now, uh, before you get to the uh, final confrontation in the storage bay, you must uh, decode the gauntlet's controls. How? Can you give us a clue? Well, I... I cannot explain. For some bizarre reason, my final words are Enig. Enig? Enig? Yes, Enig! <laughs> I can't breathe, Crichton. I can't see. Oh, of course, I keep forgetting you need to do those things, sir. Oh, thank God it's you guys. Never mind the smack at these guys. Who the smeg are you? I the smeg him Lister. Of course, he's the alternative you, one of the many David Listers that never got the chance to exist. So we're kind of spams in law. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Delicately put, sir. So that's it then? That's it? This guy's got my life. I've got no one's life. This is my life. Yeah, but your life's my life. Hope you're enjoying it, pal. I'm enjoying it plenty, thanks. What is he on about? Hey, hey. So what do we do with him? I say waste them. Rimmer, for smeg's sake! <laughs> such a dork, him, man. <laughs> You're telling me? Sir, sir, sir. Those manacles are made from dimanium, the toughest, uh, the toughest alloy in the known universe. It's completely pointless to keep pounding away at them with a domestic ball-peen hammer. <laughs> sir, it's completely pointless you being angry about my death. May I suggest you better apply your pent-up aggression to the solution of the various conundra which now face us? What's the point? Why am I trying to get out of this? We already know we fail. I was right. No, you were wrong. I never intended to kill you. Oh, no. Ah! I intended to save your life. Save my life? Why? Because if you kill me, then I won't be there to save your life. And you'll die. Sure enough, pal. Giving me my gauntlet? Well, I'm okay now. You can't touch me. You might have killed the others, but I'm safe. Oh, just one thing. 
If I do erase you from history, then you won't have been around to threaten my life in the first place. That's the point. So, in fact, I can erase you quite safely. Yeah. Yeah! It's the old backfiring time gauntlet trick. You just bought yourself a one-way ticket to oblivion. You can't! All my work, all my glorious work will be undone! You're counting on that, pal. Perhaps it'll teach you to call me a fat little human. Oh, it worked. It worked? Oh, Crichton, you're a genius. Oh, it was your scheme, sir. I merely reprogrammed the gauntlet. Oh, so what happens now? Uh, basically, we wait for the time-space continuum to reorder itself. Sir, I believe this is an appropriate junction for you to give me five. Give you five, Crichton? I can do better than that. I can give you fifteen. What does Crichton think? Crichton's off moon hopping with Rimmer. Radio links down. I'll keep trying. Do you think fly spray would be any use? Or let you, like, smeg him off? I don't want a smegged off tarantula with a grudge on the loose, that's for sure. <laughs> Can we track him, Holly? Can you get a trace on his light bee? Yeah. I'm just doing St. Wibley in Scientific. Got him. Click and a half due south. Rimmer's lust monster? <laughs> <laughs> What'll it look like? What will it do? Hey, do me a favour. Don't answer those questions, either of them. Well, every individual's mental landscape is dominated by one drive. Boy, am I glad to see you. <laughs> the name's Rimmer, Arnold J. You must be the unspeakable one. Just to fill you in, there's been a gigantic administrative cock-up. <laughs> Some of your staff have somehow mistaken me for a virgin and are trying to have me sacrificed. Now, I don't want a written apology. I don't want anyone's job. I don't even want a free weekend for two in an abyss of my choice. <laughs> I just want to go home. As far as I'm concerned, that'll be the end of it. Stop your putrid whining, you dank tuft of rectal pubic hair. <laughs> Sorry, yes, I do tend to jabber on a bit when I'm nervous. <laughs> ah, torture. Well, full points for spotting my Achilles heel. <laughs> I've never been partial to physical torture. It's actually always been one of my worst nightmares, actually. Oh, all your nightmares will come true here. Believe me, all of them. My self-loathing? Is it not true that you despise yourself? That you detest your own incompetence and stupidity? That you abhor your own cowardice and emotional immaturity? That you hold yourself in contempt for your countless failures and disappointments? Is it not true you feel nothing but the deepest, blackest rancor for that walking, vomit stain the world calls Arnold Rimmer? Is it not true? Yes. <laughs> Clearly, Mr. Rimmer's psychological mindscape is dominated by his self-hatred. Look, we've got two choices. Ordered the dectogram? We got the wrong address. 
change underwear and reload. Sir, another barrage of bazooka on fire could start a rock slide and bury us all. Let's make our excuses and leave. No, reload! And I nearly had a knobbly thing the size and shape of a Mexican agave cactus jammed up where only customs men dare to probe. <laughs> After a day like today, I could end up with trauma counselling for the next three decades. Don't you know what this place is? <laughs> now, where was I? Oh, I yes. think he's got the point, Crichton. He's a nominee for the Albert de Salvo Likeability Award. Can it be true? That's what it's like inside my mind? God, I'm such a mess. Hang on, I'm getting a powerful energy emission. Thanks, come in. Thank big. <laughs> You're really going to give yourself up? No, I'm going down to the engine rooms to cower behind one of the boilers. <laughs> and I suggest you all find ingenious places to tremble behind, too. Uh, sir, I think oh, you've overlooked... here we go. Space Corps Directive 192 the clearly Space states... Space Corps Directive 142 quite clearly states that in a hostage demand situation, a hologrammatic crew member is entirely expendable. Ah. <laughs> that may be true, yes, but... Wait a minute. You've forgotten one thing. I'm not a hologram. Not here. Of course. And isn't it Space Corps Directive 113 that clearly states a living crew member, moi, always outranks a mechanical? It's 112, actually, sir. <laughs> the tables are turned, you square-jawed metallic chump. Crichton, I hereby order you to make a synthiplast mold of my face and make a rimmer mask to fit yourself. I then further order you to put on my old spacesuit, the one with Rimmer AJ marked in block capitals above the breast pocket, and go out there and face Nightmare Norman. <laughs> and that is an order. No way. It's no way we're sacrificing Crichton just because your rancid brain created that headbanger out there. If you want my opinion, the only way anyone's going to get out of here alive is to work out some way of killing that thing. Catman. You've got to tell him we love him. Oh, you're sick! <laughs> I can't believe you said that. It's true. We have to repair a whole childhood of non-affection in less than 120 seconds. We have to compliment him, make him feel special, cherished. Ugh, this is just revolting. I want no part of this depravity. We're getting some lift. I think the cat's got something to say. No. Yes, <laughs> you have, about how you really feel about him. <sighs> Call me a sentimental old fool, but... Uh, sometimes... Sometimes... Well, I feel you're nearly almost... Uh, okay, kind of guy. <laughs> really? We're almost clear. Trust. Feel my blade loneliness. May your foulness rot in hell. <laughs> I'm in charge of security and surveillance aboard this vessel. It is I who carry the responsibility for the deployment of remote units and robotic feedback devices. I, Mr. Crichton, am the one who says launch scouter. 
I'm sorry, sir. I, I didn't mean to steal your thunder. <clears throat> Launch Scouter. And as usual, it is left to me to point out the fatal flaw in your logic. Flaw? Even if you do manage to successfully rescue Dr. Schmorger's board, <laughs> this vessel, gentlemen and Kazi droids, <laughs> the crimson short one up there, can only sustain one hologram. Or had you forgotten? Sir, might I remind you, uh, Space Car Directive 169 quite clearly states... Oh, dry up, Crichton. Holly, prepare an escape pod, anything to save me from another Space Corps directive that clearly states I'm forced to do the opposite of what's good for me. Sir, these Space Corps directives are there for our protection. Hi, we were just passing. We picked up the beacon. When I was walking down the stair, I met a man who wasn't there. He wasn't there again today. I hope that man will go away. Uh, doctor? Schopenhauer was right, wouldn't you say? Life without pain has no meaning. Right, okay, I'm going. I mean, it really is rich when the most qualified member of the crew gets sent back from a salvage expedition by an animated toilet brush with a Fletcher Christian complex. <laughs> How are you the most qualified? How? Do you know how many times I've failed my Astro Navigation exam? <laughs> Thirteen. How many times have they failed it? Not even once. <laughs> Escape pod still standing by. Right, I'm going. What really gets my go <laughs> is the way he thinks he can order me about. Listen, my lunch has got some hollow virus. She's totally barking. She's got these... Weird eyes. She keeps trying to fry us. Listy? We need backup, man. We need it bad. We need it now. Everything okay? <laughs> what? Can't you hear me? I'm sorry, Listy. You're very faint. How is the good Dr. Landstrom? Have you found her yet? Found her? She's trying to blast us into oblivion. <laughs> she sounds delightful. Tell her I look forward to meeting her. Rumor, I can hear you, but I, I don't think you can hear me, man. Uh, sir, if I may. Uh, Crichton to Starbug. Dr. Landstrom has contracted some kind of mutated hollow plague and is in a fearful psychopathic fury. Marvellous. <laughs> I'm sure she'll be a valuable asset to the team. This is useless. It's only working one way. Anyway, can't stand here gassing. Better get back to organise the welcome Dr. Landstrom party. It is, I believe, Ecclesiastes which postulates how the wise man dies, just like a fool. Twinkle, twinkle, little eye, now it's time for you to die. How do you feel, sir? No difference. My grandma's wedding ring? I lost that last year. Uh, sir, time is pressing. OK, then, wh what do I do? <laughs> oh. Ah, I think I'm OK now. <laughs> Damn, he's sealed us in. Oh, we have to incapacitate him somehow. Great idea. Only how do you incapacitate a whacked-out hologram who's running around wearing a red-and-white gingham dress and answering only to His Majesty the Potato King? I think the real problem is, sir, no matter what plan we concoct, he'll always know about it instantly because he can read our minds. We've got to actually think of a plan without actually thinking of one. Because if we think of a plan, he'll know what we're thinking and think of a way to outthink our thinking. Good thinking. <laughs>
Exquisite, the last strawberry in the universe. Calibrator locked and set. Organic infrastructure recorded and stored. Looking good. Synchronization complete. All in phase. We have perfect conditions. Engaging the triplicator. Let's make strawberries. It works. What works? Well, we've adapted the matter paddle. As usual, the object is converted into digital information. But then we split the returning signal three ways. And as well as getting the original object back, we also get two copies. This is going to solve all our supply problems? Uh, taking into account computation for recalibration and the obvious cool-off time, I think we can make possibly four or maybe even five strawberries a week. Gentlemen, history beckons. I don't know if the Nobel Prize people run a fruit section, but if they do, you've got to be this year's hot tip. You'll be famous. They'll build your statues. They'll name towns after you. Dorksville springs instantly to mind. <laughs> What's the beef, Rimmer? My beef is you've spent the last four months devising a machine that can make strawberries about 800 times more slowly than growing them. Don't you see this machine can revolutionise our lives? Absolutely. With this little baby running at full pelt, I confidently predict a... A full fruit salad by the end of the year. Wait a minute. It's not just strawberries. It's not fruit and veg. This machine can duplicate anything. It can... Oh, sir, what's wrong? Strawberry. It's incredible. It's, it's exquisite, man. It's divine. Hmm. Bizarre. This strawberry actually is superior to the original. It's as if something in the process actually refined it. Is that the same? Oh, no. Oh, in what way, sir? Bitter. Rancid. Oh, sir, I... Oh, dear. Kind of crunchy. Please, sir, the... Tangy. Oh, sir. No, crunchy. The... Oh. Crunchy. Oh. Kind of meaty with a, a wriggly kind of... Oh. Thing. The... Oh, no. Oh. Uh, perhaps it'll help if you think of them as housefly caviar. Th that belongs in my all-time top ten grossest things that have happened to me, that. That goes straight in at number five behind Nobby Simpson's coleslaw and the bicycle pump incident. <laughs> It's as if the triplicator has extracted all the very best elements from one of the duplicates and all the worst from the other. Oh, wait a minute. What now? Well, according to the scan, the molecular structure has been disrupted. They're unstable, with a, a predicted lifespan of only one hour. Now, I wonder what happens if we try the whole process in reverse. Nice experiment, Criders. What do you do for an encore? Neutron bomb juggling? <laughs> rude alert, rude alert. An electrical fire has knocked out my voice recognition, Eugene O'Neill. Many Wurlitzers are missing from my database. <laughs> abandoned shop, abandoned shop. <laughs> this is not a daffodil, this is not a daffodil. Well, thankfully, Holly's unaffected. <laughs> The engine's core is approaching critical mass. We'll have meltdown in less than 15 minutes. I think a brisk stroll in the direction of a landing bay could be an outstanding career move at this point. What? what are you saying Red 12's gonna blow? In less time than it takes a Norwegian to buy ski boots. Ah! Hey, guys, I think they're playing our tune. The Awuga Waltz. Anyone care to join me in a quick step? Let's go. Yes, 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 yes. yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, Holly, uh, th those cargo bay doors we talked about earlier, <laughs> would you mind opening them, please? <laughs> the phrase cargo bay doors does not appear to be in my lexicon. I'm very furry. Manual override! Right, right, get a radar scope, scan the wreckage. Straight away, sir. Cat, get suited up. Maybe some oxygen tanks have survived. Maybe some fuel tanks. If I can get a fix, I can get out there and bring them on board. If this board had a different start in life, he could have been Flash Gordon. Meanwhile, turn Rimmer down to minimum power. That way it'll triple his running time. Let us join our friends in a meditation chamber. Perhaps then we can spend a profitable evening seeking out answers to the metaphysical conundrum that have plagued humankind since time began. Sounds wild. Hold me back. Perhaps you're more drawn to utilitarianism. The dilemma I pose by the pursuit of the greatest happiness for the greatest number.
Got any beer? <laughs> Alcohol dulls the mind and adversely alters one's perception of reality. Counting on it. <laughs> Anyone want to join me in an airlock? I'm going to flush myself into outer space. <laughs> I don't believe there's any part of me that wants to dance like that. Oh, plainly there is, sir. Deep inside, you have a secret urge to express yourself artistically. Brothers, I am compelled to intrude. For why are they not here to greet us? Why, they must be too weak. Come, let us divide into two parties and begin our search. OK, keep them peeled, guys. Welcome, brothers. We bring food and medical supplies. What the smeg is out there? My guess? A music critic. <laughs> the poor devil. His gun must have gone off accidentally. Where are you going? I'm going to help the poor wretch. Oh, he means me no harm. Welcome, my children. We bring you balms and tinctures. Come in peace and love to sing you healing hymns. <laughs> Come and join me in this simple dance of greeting. Is he dead? We can only hope. What is this? It's a greeting gift, a sparkling welcome orb. <laughs> we thank thee, dear brothers. Come, let us embrace its splendid beauty and share in its vibrations. Oh, oh it's exquisite, divine. What does it say to you, brother? It says, Earth Mother, fruit, regeneration. It speaks of the sparkling future. I'm a homicidal maniac, Crichton. My body's been remote controlled by the lows. Crichton, look out! Crichton, you've got to stop me! Waste him! Oh, what? It's the only way! Give me a break, Rima! Uh, Crichton, for God's sake, blow him away! Uh, there must be another way! Incapacitate me! Crichton, smash him over the head with the iron bow! Well, I need his permission to do that, sir. No way! Crichton, he's killing the cat! Oh, oh what am I to do? Uh, incapacitate me in a painless way! Uh, that was unnecessary. Unnecessary? Look what you did to my neckline. This stuff never springs back. Oh, my God! I'm going for the bazookoids! Oh. Oh. Duck! <laughs> Left! Oh. Right! Oh. Oh. Now, come on, guys. Why don't you get behind me? Oh. I'm coming up right behind you, sir. I'm trying to reload, Crichton. Surprise me! I'm going to come round and surprise you, sir. Get on with it, Crichton. Surprise me now! Oh. I'm going to surprise you now, sir. <laughs> 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 Oh. OK, how long before the triplicator activates? To be honest, sir, I don't think we're going to make it. So this is octopus ink? Well, I'm just completing a chemical analysis. Oh, uh, what? Well, uh, yes. Uh, no. No, on the other hand, yes. No. No, better still. Uh, no, wait, yes. Uh, uh, sir, I'm invoking Space Corps Director 1975456-6, stroke which clearly states that a mechanoid may issue orders to human crew members if the lives of said crew members are indirectly or directly under threat from a hitherto unperceived source, and there is an adequate time to explain the precise nature of the unforeseen death threat. Uh, under these conditions, I, a mere mechanical, am empowered to issue the order. Oh. <laughs> 
should get back as, as soon as we can and then take a mood stabilizer, suggest lithium carbonate. Look, I'm going to try and talk you back, cheer you up somehow. Where the hell is that Reggie Dixon dance band music, Tango Treats? I really if you're playing that, I'm staying in here. Repressurizing now! <laughs> so the first doctor says to the second doctor, no, wait, I forgot to tell you, the first doctor is Chinese. So the second doctor says, no, 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 the first doctor says, so would you if you'd ever been to Linpo? No, Nanpo. No, wait a minute. Am I getting mixed up with the Nanpo joke about the two nurses? Anyway, it's definitely something Po, but you get it. He basically got some sexually transmitted disease from the first doctor's wife, who lived in this, this Po place in, in China. And obviously this was a surprise to the first doctor, because A, he didn't know the other doctor was having an affair with his wife in the first place, and B, he'd passed on to him his gonorrhea, which is sort of like a double insult, because he'd not only given it to his wife, he'd given it to him too. And that's basically the gag. Crichton, I'm getting something. I'm picking up a false heartbeat. A what? Uh, I know emotionally this probably isn't the news you want to hear right now, but there's a blob on the sonoscope the size of New Mexico. <laughs> and it's heading your way. Is it me? Or did everything suddenly become two-dimensional? very bad feeling about this. <clears throat> uh, Crichton, any theories? Only deeply unpleasant ones, sir. <laughs> well, what puzzles me slightly is what a man of such undoubted good breeding We'll be doing wearing a coat that smells like an elderly male yak has taken a leak in both the pockets. <laughs> well, isn't it obvious? Uh, no, it isn't. Of course it is, Jake. Just think about it. William Doyle the Fourth, heir to the Doyle billions, strolling home from another masquerade ball, his hover limo gliding 20 yards in front of him, when suddenly he gets attacked from behind by a gang of working class people. They beat him, strip him naked, dress him in these disgusting clothes, and then dump him unconscious in a computer game arcade where no one will think of looking for him. Isn't that just totally, totally, totally credible? Oh my God. My name's Billy Doyle and my cologne is Oda Yak Urine. <laughs> Look out the barrier. Brace yourselves. We're going through it. Are you crazy? Yes, he is. You all are. <laughs> So, what happened to the despair squid? I took care of that. Limpet mines. There's enough fried calamari out there to feed the whole of Italy. Well, I say let's get out of here. Say old Squidly Diddly back there has relatives and his pops is out looking for him. He's going to be mighty teed off when he finds out Junior won't be going to this year's annual jellyfish bar. 